Today, Tees Valley Mayor Ben Houchen and Stobart's Director of Partnership Development, Kate Willard, officially revealed the publicly chosen name for the former Durham Tees Valley Airport as Teesside International Airport. The design nicely incorporating the familiar landscape feature of Roseberry Topping. After the unveiling, we had a chance to speak to Mayor Ben Houchen. Ben Houchen, you uh, pledged a big campaign promise to get the airport back and you've done that. You went out to the public for the name of the airport and after a legal wrangle, you managed to get that as well. Is this for you, you know, can you put a big tick next to the whole lot and move on to your next project or you're still going to be very hands-on here? No, we, we can never move on to the next project. I mean, this is just the start. We've got a few new flights, obviously Mallorca, people can go online and book today to fly on holiday next year, which I think is fantastic. But it's a long journey. We've got a 10-year plan. It's great to get the name change back. 94% of people wanted it. It's their airport. They should be able to name it. So that's why we've got the name change today. But actually being able to turn the fortunes around of this airport, it's not going to happen over the next few weeks or months. It's going to take years. We need more flights. We need more scheduled flights. We need a low-cost carrier. We need a, an EasyJet, a Ryanair or a Wiz to come in, base themselves here and get many more people coming through this airport going on holiday. So this is the start of the journey. I am synonymous with the airport, either for good or for ill, and we need to make sure it succeeds. But that doesn't stop me from being able to progress with other projects, and hopefully people will see that we are getting on with other things in the region. Oh, before we go on to other projects, can I just ask you, the parking charges here at the airport are really lenient compared mm. to some airports. Can the public hope that they will stay that way? Uh, we hope so in the near term. I mean, three, three hours free parking is, is great. Uh, however, you know, if you're flying from the airport... Three hours is no good to anybody, really. So, you know, we're always going to monitor what's the best thing to do. How can we generate more revenue for the airport to make it sustainable? But how do we make sure that we're not turning passengers off? Because ultimately, the things that make airports work are people through the terminal using it. And it needs to be as user-friendly as possible. It needs to be cheap and it needs to be accessible. And if that means pricing people out from car parking charges, that's obviously something we're not going to do. Excellent. The... Um on to other things now. You must have been delighted yesterday when new Prime Minister Boris Johnson mentioned the Freeport. You have teed up our area, pardon the pun, for a Freeport. Realistically, how how much hope is there that we can be the first Freeport? Well, when Boris came up to Darlington as part of the leadership campaign, um, he endorsed the policy that I'd developed in Teesside. I mean, the one thing he said about Freeports is the policy that we'd delivered to him and that he's read and looked at was the thing that he's endorsed. And that's often, you often think in leadership campaigns, what's he going to take up in office if he's successful or not? And to be honest, I was surprised, but pleasantly surprised, that in his first speech outside of number 10, he said we're going to deliver Freeports now. <laughs> yeah, I guess. We're speaking to his team. Um, the policy that he's adopted is ours. A little technical point is that, you know, you've got Rishi Sunak, a huge supporter of Freeports, who, who is now Chief Secretary in the Treasury, and the Treasury are obviously going to play a key role in the rollout of Freeports. Liz Truss, Department of International Trade, who often lead on these types of international investment um, packages, massive supporter of Freeports. So we now just need to push home our advantage and make sure that Teesside becomes that pilot region that gets the first free zone in the UK. It was very hopeful though, isn't it, after oh, all the fantastic. work you've done? It's fantastic. But you know what, it's not done until it's signed on the dotted line, so no, there's plenty sure. more work to do. And what else is lined up for the region? Well, there's lots. I mean, the big stuff going forward are trains, you know, Darlington Station and Middlesbrough Station. We're looking now at the potential upgrade of Hartlepool Station, both in the short term to increase capacity at Hartlepool, but potentially in the long term, a second platform now that's not going to happen in the next few months but in the, over the next few years can we look at putting in a second platform at Hartlepool to vastly increase capacity because that doesn't just help Hartlepool it actually helps not just the Tees Valley but actually the northern network surprisingly I mean people don't understand how important that station can be to unlock capacity but the other thing I'm particularly excited about is that um, tomorrow uh, we've, we're signing off um, additional buses in the Tees Valley I mean for example in Hartlepool rural Hartlepool the west of Hartlepool that isn't served by any bus network at all at the minute we'll see a pilot come to that area for a demand responsive bus service so wow. basically uber for buses um, and people can download the app is going to be the plan people are going to be able to go online and book they're going to be able to ring up and book um, and in effect it's a bus that is responsive it doesn't follow a specific route but actually is responsive to where people want to be picked up from so it allows a bus to cover an area rather than a route which makes it more sustainable and it should if the pilot goes well, mean that you can have sustainable public transport in rural areas like the west of Hartlepool. And are you going to put out a press release on how to access it and one thing or another? Absolutely. I mean, we're going through the procurement process now. We're announcing that we're going to be doing this. And obviously, as it gets to the 
date of actually putting them on the roads, well, there's going to be a huge push about what this actually means. And we've tried to task uh, the team with making sure that these are on the roads before the end of the year. Mr Mayor, thank you very much. Please like and follow Hartlepool TV on Facebook and YouTube.